Ukulele is a 3D platformer collectathon game by much of the same team that brought us Banjo Kazooie way back in June of 1998. After being bought by Microsoft and forced to make shitty Kinect games, the former members of the company Rare decided enough was enough and split off to become Platonic Games. After a startlingly successful Kickstarter to aid their funding and a few years of development time to polish, the spiritual successor of the Baron Bird was finally born. Ukulele. April of 2017 saw the Iguana and Bat hit the gaming scene and the reception was... well... mixed. Being the spiritual successor of Banjo-Kazooie set expectations sky-high for the new duo and fans were completely divided as to whether this was a good game or not. Would a gaming genre that pretty much died out almost 10 years ago be able to do well at today's audiences, or was Platonic just cashing in their nostalgia card to a generation of 30-year-old gamers that miss the legendary duo? Well, to be honest, I never played Banjo-Kazooie. <gasps> yeah, I was a Mario 64 kid, but for the sake of this review, you can at least count on me not having those rose-tinted glasses, right? I'm not said to love or hate this game based on where it came from. Ukulele starts off with a very simple plot. Our heroes have just moved into their new pirate ship house and are basking in the sunshine when the evil corporate big boss, Capital B, starts stealing all the books in the world with a giant vacuum. He and his corporate masters are looking for something called The One Book, which has the power to rewrite the universe as the owner sees fit. Make sure you enjoy this intro as the plot itself is only ever mentioned like once or twice ever again. It's just something to get the game going. And don't tell me that collectathon games can't have good stories because Psychonauts might have something to say about that. Oh my god! Let's make out! Uh, what? Anyway, Laylee's book just happens to be the one book that everyone is looking for, but she wants to sell it for its golden pages. She has no idea of the power it contains. When Capital B steals it and it's damaged in the process, it gets lost amongst the countless other books that are hoovered up by the machines of the Hivery Towers Corporation. I love how you can just feel the hate for large companies here. Don't think I didn't notice that, Platonic. So, with their books stolen and the pages fluttering in the wind, it's up to Yuka and Lele to retrieve the pages of the one book before Capital B finds it and uses its magic to remake the universe for his own corporate greed purposes. The pages, called Pages, are your main collectible in the game. There are 145 of them, 25 in each of the game's five levels, with others strewn about the hub world that connects them all. Pages are awarded for completing small challenges throughout the game, anything from obstacle courses to boss battles, mini games, or simply reaching hard to reach places. There's also the Pagey and Akagey, which will only open if you complete certain challenges nearby to them. Pages are used to open up the Grand Tome Worlds, the levels that are strewn about Hivery Towers. Later on, with even more magical pages, you can expand the levels to make them even larger. I thought this was a great idea. Not only are you using your main collectible to track your progress, but you spend them like a currency so they all feel like they're worth grabbing. That's actually something I really loved about ukulele. Every single collectible has a purpose. You're not just grabbing stuff to grab stuff like other game characters I could name. Pages open and expand the levels. There are quills that you use to purchase new special abilities and health and power bar extenders are self-explanatory. All the things you run about collecting are exciting because they either expand the game itself or they make you more powerful in the long run. This is excellent. Well, except one. There is a secret set of collectibles referred to as pirate treasures. There's one in each level, they do nothing when you get them, and they are nearly impossible to find. I guess they're for bragging rights? I mean, they give you an achievement and stuff, but other than that, nothing. The game doesn't acknowledge them in any dialogue, cutscene, or listing on any of the pause menus. Even when you get them, they're not shown anywhere to say that you actually got them. Maybe they're a reference to Ukulele's pirate ship house? I, I don't know, it's really not clear. Speaking of unclear, let's talk direction. Ukulele pretty much lacks direction, but that's kind of the point. You get dropped into these massive worlds and you just sort of go do whatever you want to do. 
There's no mini-map, compass, hints, or signposts anywhere. Remember in Mario 64 you would jump into a painting and there would be a little hint to tell you where the next star was? Ukulele doesn't even give you that. It's a sandbox that refuses to hold your hand or tell you what to do. Have you been up that mountain? There might be a pagey up there, you should go check it out. How about that minecart minigame? Did you do that yet? I bet there's a pagey waiting if you do well enough. The point of a collectathon game is a slow, meticulous search for anything that's not nailed down, and Ukulele certainly delivers that. I think I would have preferred 10 small levels instead of 5 gigantic ones, but the shine and polish is certainly there in what we do get. Hivery Towers, the hub world, is the only exception as it is a completely confusing mess of tunnels, secret passages, shortcuts, and bullshit that just doesn't make any sense. I can't count the number of times I got lost just trying to move from one level to another, which says a lot because there are only five levels. That aside though, the level design was pretty great. How do you get around in these levels though? Well, I mentioned power-ups, so let's see those. Yuka and Laylee both get a huge variety of moves by collecting quills and turning them into this snake named Trouser. Yes, the snake named Trouser. Someone waited for almost 20 years to make that joke, but damn it, it made it into the game. Good job, Platonic. Yuka can roll around, turn invisible, pound the ground, and use his tongue to get from A to B using special tongue grab spots. He can also slurp up different fruits to get temporary powers like breathing fire, shooting grenades, glowing in the dark, stuff like that. Laylee, on the other hand, can shoot sonar rings, protect Yuka with shielding, and eventually even fly with her friend in tow. Dude, that'd be sick. That would be pretty sick. There is a downside to these moves, however, and I'm not talking about the energy meter as it's actually very generous when it's being used. The edible fruit power-ups only last like 20 seconds, and flying basically breaks the game wide open. It's hard to enjoy spewing fire from my mouth if there's nothing close enough to burn within 20 seconds, and it's really hard to enjoy a 3D platformer if I can just fly over everything without a care in the world. Speaking from the heart here, I don't think flying should have been in this game at all. Gliding is fine, you can do that, but not flying. It completely invalidates about three-fourths of the game's challenges. Thankfully, this power-up is purchased in the game's final level, but that doesn't stop you from collecting the minimum number of pages, opening up the last level, finding Trouser, and then getting it so you can just cheese your way through the rest of the game. I gotta say though, rolling around is the only way to travel, as it's fast, easy to control, and actually gets used in a lot of time challenges and obstacle courses. Woohoo! <laughs> At the end of the day, I had a lot of fun with Ukulele. It's a deeply flawed game, as it's built on the philosophies of something that came out two decades ago and has long since been buried, but it delivers nicely on what it's set out to do. Any nitpicks I might have are honestly just inherent to the genre of 3D platformers. You know, tricky camera, occasionally janky controls, etc. You know, you and every other 3D platformer ukulele, so I can't fault you for any of that. Only about 10 of the 145 pages are truly difficult to get, and the rest of the game is a fun, colorful romp. The characters are memorable and talk in this adorable yibber-yabber. The levels, while uncreative in theme like ice and swamp, are big and have lots of fun things to do in each one. And while, yes, flying breaks the game wide open, there's enough tunnels, underwater stuff, and side passages to make up for it where flying simply won't do you any good. There's a lot of flaws here, but there's just as much good stuff in the game. So I suppose that makes ukulele a middle-of-the-road sort of game. It's not amazing, but it's not terrible either. 
I'll take this moment to brag that I got the Platinum Trophy by collecting everything in the game, including the pirate treasures, so I think I can expertly say it's a 5 or a 6 out of 10. An okay game to play. Do I think there will ever be a sequel? A, uh, Tuka lately? Uh, I honestly don't think so. Reviews and reactions have been so mixed for this, I'm not sure we'll ever see a sequel, but I certainly had fun for the 30 hours of entertainment that it gave me. I'd say check it out if you just want a fun, colorful game that's not too difficult and tries its very best to revive an old genre that, frankly, just needs a little bit more modern refinement before it's brought back into the limelight. And honestly, if you can get a trouser snake joke and a cunnilingus joke into the same game and still get an E rating, they must be doing something right. Very sneaky, Platonic.